Okay, so a very nice error correction code used in quantum computation is called the 9-qubit Shor code, which was invented by Peter Shor in the mid-90s. And what's very nice about this code is that it protects a qubit from, a, from an arbitrary effect. So no matter what kind of error we have, we can always use Shor code to recover the error whether it's a phase flip code or a bit flip code, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is a 9-qubit code, which uh, utilizes a 3-qubit phase flip and the bit flip code all together. And we start with encoding the given qubit using the phase flip code first. Um, so cat0 will be first mapped to 3 qubit plus basis and cat1 is mapped to minus 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 and then we encode each of these um, each of these cat cat uh, plus and cat minus using the three qubit bit flip code so um, each of cat plus will be mapped to the three qubit state zero 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 plus one 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 And we have a normalization factor of 1 over square root 2. And cat minus will be mapped to 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 1, 1. And in the end, we get a 9 qubit code. So so as a result, cat0 will be mapped to its logical counterpart. Let's denote this by um, 0L, cat0L, meaning that the, the logical counterpart of uh, 0, the code word for 0, will be equal to 0, 0, 0 plus 1, 1, 1, tensor 0, 0, 0 plus 1, 1, 1, tensor 0, 0, 0, plus 1, 1, 1. Okay, and then we have 1 over square root 2 cube. That's 1 over 2 times square root 2. Okay. So then, okay, so notice that these are the code words for plus. Okay. All right, so and similarly we code cat1 by its code word cat1l and the code word for 1 is same as above except that the sign is minus All right, so let me draw the decoding diagram. I'm only going to do, draw the decoding part. Um, the circuit diagram has uh, it contains nine wires since it's a nine qubit code. So size the qubit that we want to. Uh, protect. Okay, this is our original qubit. And we start with psi. And then we apply a Hadamard transform here. But before that, um, so let me complete the whole picture. 
now we have um, eight qubits set to zero. Okay. So in total, we have nine qubits. So first we apply uh, the face flip code and then we apply the bit flip code. And that means we apply a C naught transformation. Uh, okay, so we applied Hadamard transform on the first qubit. We have another Hadamard transform on the fourth qubit. And then another Hadamard transform um, three qubit ahead, which is six qubit. Okay. And then we apply a C naught transformation on the fourth qubit here by taking the first qubit as the uh, control qubit. And another C naught transformation on the seventh qubit, again taking the first qubit as the target qubit. So we have a C naught transformation before the Hadamard transform here. Okay, so this completes the first phase. Now we apply the bit flip code. And then what we do is that we take, uh, for each of these uh, three qubit blocks, so we have three blocks, for each block we apply the bit flip transform, we take the first qubit as the control qubit and we apply a C naught transformation on the second qubit and then apply another C naught on the third qubit. Okay, and then we do the same thing for the other blocks. Um, so there seems to be a problem. Oh, there should be another wire here. Okay, so... Um, Okay, so we applied Hadamard transformation on the fourth qubit and then fifth, sixth, seventh. Okay, fifth, sixth, seven. Right, so another Hadamard transform here. And this goes right here. Okay, um, the bit flip code for the second block should look like the C naught transformation goes here. All right, so another C naught here. So taking the um, the seventh qubit as a target qubit and apply the C naught transformation on the eighth and ninth qubits. So this completes the decoding procedure and then we have the 
the error block, whatever the error is, okay? All right, so, so how does the shortcode um, work? How does it correct the face flip and the bit flip errors on, on a single qubit? Okay, suppose that we have a bit flip error. Okay, so suppose that the first qubit um, gets a bit flip error. So what we do is that we need to determine uh, which qubit uh, gets flipped. Okay, so we first want to compare the first two qubits and see if they are different. And to determine this, we uh, simply apply um, we we observe the operation. Uh, the the observable z tensor z tensor identity matrix. Okay, so let's call this uh, the observable z one z two. Now, um, measuring this observable helps us. Um, it will help us determine uh, whether the first two qubits are different from each other. Okay. Now, fortunately, by using the spectral decomposition theorem, uh, Z1 times Z2, this operator, tells us, in fact, um, which of the first two qubits are different from each other. Because the eigenvalues of this operator are 1 and minus 1. Okay, so when we measure Z1, Z2, um, if the first and second bits are different, then uh, we will get to observe the eigenvalue minus 1. Okay. If they are the same, then we get to observe the eigenvalue 1. So this is how we can um, see uh, whether the first two qubits are different from each other. And if they are, if they are different from each other, then we conclude that um, the bit flip error must have occurred uh, on either of the qubits, either the first or the second qubit. Okay. And next, we compare the second and the third qubit. Okay, the second and the third qubit. So this compares. the first and second qubit to tell whether they are different. Okay, and if they are different, then that means the error must have occurred on the first or the second qubit. And next, we compare the second qubit and the third qubit. Okay. And we do this similarly by applying, uh, by observing the ob the observable z2, z3, okay, which is simply i tensor z tensor z, okay. Okay, so if we find out that they're the same, if the second and third qubit are the same, then it can't be that the second qubit, uh, it, it can't be that the second qubit is flipped, so we conclude that the first qubit must have been flipped, okay? And then we recover the first qubit back to its original state, okay? So by flipping the first qubit. So this is for the bit flip uh, recovery. And as for the face flip recovery, uh, we, we pretty much do the same thing. Um, for the face flip error, you know, we, we check the blocks, okay? The three qubit blocks here these blocks. So we compare the first block and the second block. Okay. And 
what does it mean that the first and second blocks are the same? Well, we simply observe the uh, the sign value, right? So it, um, 0, 0, 0 plus 1, 1, 1. That block and this block, so they're the same, right? So we're looking at the sign value here. Um, so we begin with comparing the sign value of the first and second blocks of the three qubit, um, uh, of the three qubit block, the three state block, just as we did for the the uh, bit flip error. Okay. Um, if they are the same, that is, if the sign value of the first block and the second block are the same, then um, then we have no problem. Um, if they are different, then we conclude that phase flip error must have occurred on either on the first block or the second block. Okay, and then we go on to compare the second block and the third block. Okay, um, so we essentially do the same, except with working with the phase flip, um, with a phase flip recovery. Now the beauty of this short code, this nine qubit code, is that it works on arbitrary errors occurring on a single qubit. There are continue many errors in quantum computation because uh, recall that a phase value can be expressed generally as a complex number, right? So e to the i theta, where theta is a real number. between 0 and 1. So um, an error could be as tiny as a rotation of the phase value, but it, key, it could also be as disastrous as replacing the entire qubit with junk information. But still, despite all that, the 9 qubit shortcode works in all cases and it fixes arbitrary errors.